Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and this week we are doing the City Morning Project. It's <laughs> I can't get that out. That's Keenan. He'll be telling me where to look and we chat about things. We have intense conversations about food, but yes. besides that he's pretty supportive. Yep. And um, this is a really fun project. If you just did the hide and seek tutorial with us, this is kind of the opposite of what we did in terms of layering. So it's kind of fun to do one um, back to back. Exciting. What? I am excited. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> <laughs> We're using two br paint brushes around two and around six. We are going to be doing an all over even wash. So if you want to use a larger paintbrush, have that ready to go. I will be utilizing my paper towel for that part. And we're gonna be doing this project in four steps. So our very first step, we are going to um, do an even wash across the entire painting. Our second step, we are going to do um, a light value buildings in the back. Third step, we're gonna do the medium value buildings, which is in the mid-ground, and then we'll do the dark value buildings in the foreground here. So four steps. And we will be using all five of our colors in the box. So our very first color is emerald green. Our second color is orchid. Our third color is yellow ochre. Our fourth color is space blue. And our fifth color is Payne's gray. Now you can see we don't actually have green in this painting. We mix a lot of the colors, but I just wanted to give you a heads up now that the emerald green is utilized to tone down our orchid. That's it. So it's just to tone down like the purple pinkness of that. Um, you don't have to do that though. And if you're mixing it and getting like brown colors and you're adding a little too much green. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Nice, thank you. Yeah, okay. We're gonna do our outline and then we'll do our oath and then we will get uh, started. So I tape the edges of my paper so I can have a clean edge. Um, again, that is totally up to you guys if you wanna do that. And then I grab my outline and I'm just making sure that the bottom of my buildings are going to go to the edge of my taped paper. So you can kind of see that blue taped through so I know that I'm going to the edge. Um, if yours doesn't go to the edge, that's okay. Then you just might want to make your buildings go a little bit longer so then they don't just like float in mid space, which I mean, you can have floating buildings. You could put the, the buildings on top of like do a cloud bottom. That would be like cool. A floating city. Yeah. I like that idea. Okay, I'm gonna take my graphite paper and put it dark, shiny side down. Remember, graphite paper is reusable, so don't throw it, throw it out after one use. And I'm gonna use an orange pen to make my outlines, just so I know what I've already outlined. Also, if you guys haven't noticed, this is all just a lot of straight lines, okay? Just very straight lines which it's hard to paint and trace straight lines. So if you want to use like, uh, you can use your reference card or a ruler or something to help you with your straight lines, you can. I'm just gonna go for it and we'll see how it goes, you know? I just wanted to give you a heads up that tracing and drawing and painting straight lines is kind of hard. Also, I encourage you guys to try new things and, um, you know, try something new, that kind of stuff. And I just want to say that um, I'm kind of going out on a ledge here because I don't usually paint cityscapes or buildings, probably for the sole reason of the straight edges are kind of intimidating to me. Oh. So this is me trying something new. Nice. So... Uh, I will teach it the best way that I can, and I might not have all the answers for everything, but this is what we do. You just keep on going, trying to improve as you go. And so if you try and paint this and it's not quite <clears throat> where you want it to be, that's okay. Or maybe you paint this and you found out that your calling in life is to do straight edges and buildings, and that's awesome. 
So it's just good to try new stuff, you know. You'll also notice that I didn't, do not have any windows on these buildings. And that's because when we go to paint them, I'm actually just going to, especially like the foreground ones, and I'll show you this obviously when we do it, but um, I kind of paint a grid on the buildings and then just like fill in some of the spaces so it looks like windows. And I figured that is actually much easier to do instead of trying to trace totally. and paint around windows. So I'll show you guys that when we get there. Kenan, what are your favorite types of paintings? Do you like it when we do like landscapes or animals or? So it's funny you mentioned that the buildings aren't your go-to because this one and the other one we did last year that I can't remember the name of. Last June, the last city building we yes. did. Those are my favorite types because I like the hard lines. Mm. But I also like the one last year in June, I think you said. Um, because it seems like a dream. Oh yeah, we did a lot of like loose washes, yes. kind of blending out from nothing. Yes. And yeah. I love the sketch look of yes. pictures and paintings. That's my favorite. Do you know what you would really love? Hmm. Is something called urban sketching. Okay, let me write that down. You should look it up because urban sketching is beautiful. It, it's exactly what you're what you're thinking, where they go out into cities or they just go out and they sketch these buildings and then they'll also paint them and stuff like that. But it's all in like a sketchbook and they're beautiful. They're so beautiful. If it's on Pinterest, I'll find it. <laughs> okay, so I think I have everything traced and outlined. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, let's do our oath. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. <laughs> yes! We got a bell. Somebody mailed us a bell. Michelle. Yes. And so now we have our own little bell that we can ring when we do We can't that. pronounce her name, but we can use the bell she sent us. Her last name. Her last starts name. with a B. Maybe we shouldn't even say her we last shouldn't name, though. Yeah, we should. That's a good so, call. Good call. Good call. Michelle, thank you for that little ding bell. It is awesome. Do you want to show them? Because yeah. it's adorable. Yeah, it's so great. This is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. So we appreciate that. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I keep losing my voice this morning, but I kind of like it when my voice gets a little scratch to it. Kind of like Phoebe Buffet. Yeah. <laughs> my sticky shoe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's get to painting, everybody. So we're going to start with our first step of putting in an even wash with our sky. Now, you can do this with a paintbrush, but because it's around and because it's smaller, it will not be even. You'll get some hard edges and lines, which is not the end of the world. If you don't mind it, I don't mind it. I like me a good edge sometimes. Same. Um, you can use a larger, like a wash brush, like something like this. This is a three quarter inch wash. You can easily get a smooth wash with this type of brush. Um, but I did not use that. I used a paper towel. So. Oh, that's right. The paper towel trick, like in the first tutorial, where I'm going to mix a little bit of ochre and a little bit of orchid together and a bunch of water because we want this to be really, really light. So it's like a light pink. But the reason why I'm putting a little bit of ochre in there is to give it a warmth to it. So it has more of a peachy undertone as opposed to a purple undertone. Um, however, color choices are completely up to you guys. So if you like doing more of a purple, that's okay. I wanted to give the feeling of, you know, when the sun first comes up and it's like warm and pink a mm -hmm. little bit. That's what I was thinking of. Okay, get my paper towel, pick up the color that I mixed and I'm just going to start putting it on my paper. Now, what you have to be careful of is your paper towel is absorbent. So um, you're gonna have to pick up more paint and water than you anticipate. Another way that you can do it is, instead of just picking straight up from your paper towel, 
is you can paint an area and then immediately spread it, which actually might be the easiest way to do it um, if you don't want to like have this soaking thing at the end of it. So I, I have the top part. You probably can't see it very well because it's a super light wash, but it's there. Okay, so put it in and then spread it. Don't rub too hard when you're doing your paper towel because you will start to degrade the paper. And you want to make sure that this color is going to go past the buildings. And it's okay to paint over the buildings because we'll be painting the buildings so it doesn't really matter. And kind of rub, spread it out. Makes me of cotton candy. The color? Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, that's it, just a nice light wash. Mine in the reference photo is a little bit um, darker and I darkened that so you guys could see it. Um, but if you look on my outlines here, it's very, or my step-by-steps, it's very, very light. But again, however light it is, is completely up to you. Just make sure that when you're painting your buildings that you're doing a value darker so they show up. So that's all it is, it's just, um, react to what you painted. Okay, so we're going to let that dry and then we're going to start with our second step doing our light value and the buildings that are farthest away. And um, you guys can kind of choose which ones are the farthest away, but I just did, you can follow the outline here, but I kind of just did the ones that are kind of covered up the most, right? So this one, these guys back here, those ones are the farthest away. So I'm just going to take a little bit of purple and a tiny amount of green because I want to neutralize that purple a little bit. Now you saw that was just a tiny itty bitty bit. I want to show you guys what it looks like if you use too much. So let's say I have my purple and yellow ochre and I do some green in there. Oh, that looks like yellow ochre, actually. That's funny. That's nice. <laughs> but just so you guys know, um, if you're getting too much of a muddy brown color and not like a pinky purple color, you're using a little bit too much green. So, um, And if that happens to you, that's fine. What I like to do if I'm mixing, and let's say I mix all this and it's the wrong color, instead of like having to add a ton of purple on that, I'll just swoop some to the side and then add my purple to that. Mm. And that way I don't have to try and bring up this whole thing. I have all this. And can they see this on screen? I was just going to ask if you could shift it, actually. Yeah. So I just did a one swoop from here, brought it over, and then did a purple swoop in there. It's much easier to adjust colors on smaller things than, like, huge areas. Does that make sense? Much smaller to adjust colors it's, on? It's easier to... Sorry, sorry. I, I, I might I have mixed much, up. I said much smaller. Sorry. Much easier to adjust <laughs> colors on a smaller... Yeah, like if, I, if I'm only using a little bit of paint and this is the wrong mixed color, instead of trying to mix this entire thing as the right color, I can just pull some from the side. Gotcha. And mix the right color yes. into that. And then that way, it's just easier. Yeah. Because it's a easy. smaller area. Totally. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I explain things and I'm like, I don't know if that is like a, yeah, it does, Sarah, you don't need to say that, or if that's helpful. <laughs> Well, also sometimes... Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's... You want to make sure this is dry. Mine is dry. And I'm just going to uh, start painting here. I'm using my six, but these are smaller buildings, so if you want to use your two, there's nothing wrong with that. And just make sure that when you lay it down, it's a darker value than what the sky is, so it, it, so it can be seen. And you can adjust too. Like let's say I laid that down, I'm like, gosh, that is so much more peach than I wanted. I still wanted a little bit more purple than that. Well, do another purple wash on top of it. Okay. 
Also, if you want to switch up the colors by building by building, even with the light washes, that's okay. So these are all light values, right? But what if I'm like, gosh, I kind of want this to have um, a bluish purple look to it. You can absolutely do that. Just make sure that the values stay the same. So I'm going to grab a little bit of orchid. I'm going to grab a little bit of space blue. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to that. And then that way, it's a different color, but a similar value. How would you potentially make it seem like some of those buildings are being shaded by the larger building? You would then, you would have to create, like mentally think of where your light source is. And then like, let's say, okay, I want there to be shadows on the buildings to the side. If my light source is here, then I know that I'll have shadows wherever the larger buildings are blocking them. Okay, if my light source is here, it would be opposite. So you would have to like define a light source and then also define where these buildings exist together in space. Because hmm. I'm kind of pretending that we're looking at this from farther away. Um, so these buildings could seem right next to each other, but in actuality, they could be that makes sense. much farther apart. So then even if there was a really strong light source that was coming, it might not affect the building next to it because instead of being on one plane, they're actually like this. Gotcha. But we can't totally tell that because we're looking at things from farther away. And that's why the values kind of help us. The values help us put things a little bit in space. Like the lighter value ones are going to feel farther away. The darker ones are going to feel closer. Um, so that is something we can use to help us, but that, you know what I'm saying? Totally. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm just going to keep on keeping on. And again, you can refer to your reference photo, even if you want to like number these buildings, if you're really not sure which one should be darker or lighter, you can do that. But I challenge you to like be okay with just like eyeing it. It's really good practice for your eyes to try and look at something and then try and like copy it a little bit. And it takes time. It doesn't happen right away, so don't get frustrated, but it's good practice, especially if you are interested in um, creating paintings from life or from photographs. And this, I'm going to switch to my round two to do this really thin tower at the top. And this is, okay, this is tricky. You want to make sure that this line is straight. The other ones, you can kind of get away with them being kind of crooked, but this one, it's going to be like super obvious if it's not straight. Kind of just like a bent antenna on the very right top. <laughs> yes. So if you gotta like, like seriously like back away from it and be like, okay, is my paper straight? Okay, I think I did it. Nice. And then <clears throat> to kind of give some of these buildings, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of dimension, some of them we're seeing flat. And then some of them we're seeing from, um, like we can see that there's two sides to this one, right? So some of those are just straight facing towards us and then some of them are angled. Hmm. So to play Who off of the- the city planner? <laughs> all these angled buildings. They're like this one, this way. <laughs> um, so to kind of like help with that dimensionality a little bit, if you wanted to add just a little bit of a layer on one side of these buildings. You can. You don't have to. And again, you know, painting buildings and cityscapes is not um, 
like my forte. And so if you're, if you're, if you do paint cities and buildingscapes a lot, and you're like, that's not actually how it would be, <laughs> you're you probably doing? right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. It's okay to try something new. Okay, so for this back one, I'm going to start doing my grid thing that I kind of told you about. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm just going to start, and you guys know how to do a grid. You just do line, line, line. And then you're going to do it the opposite way. Pay attention to the angle of the roof because you're going to keep that angle like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill in some of these spaces. So then it's not as obvious that it was a grid. Does that make sense? Totally. And it looks like some of the lights are on, some of the lights are off. And I'm gonna actually straighten out this building a little bit. There we go. But that's how I'm gonna do the windows for all of my buildings. Okay, and then it looks like I had a little bit more value on this side. Gosh, I love this kind of peachy color that I got. It's very warm. It's very comforting. It is. Makes me think of uh, a little unicorn one of my daughters has. A unicorn? Is that what you said? Yes. <laughs> Now, just so you guys know, even these back buildings that I did, there's a different, like this value is a little bit darker than this value. Do you see that? Yeah. And I know, okay, if you have a hard time looking at value, and this is gonna sound crazy, but it's actually super helpful. What I do in order to clearly define my lights and darks in a painting is when I look at it or the photo that I'm trying to recreate or anything, I unfocus my eyes or I kind of like squeeze my eyes, but I think unfocusing actually helps me most. I unfocus my eyes, and if you unfocus your eyes, darker areas will stick out more. So then if I look at this painting and I unfocus my eyes, this left side is sticking out more than this. Mm. So that's a little tool that you can use to help kind of differentiate between values. It does seem curved. Oh, this one? No, like the overall picture? When you yeah. squint, you unfocus your eye. Seems like it's got a it's curved city. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. And then like, so this area when I squint my eyes or unfocus them, this is popping out because I have a little bit of a darker side mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. These sides are strong. The top of this is stronger. Okay. So um, I know it feels silly, but that's what I use to help me. My entire point of saying that though, is that's okay that there's a slight value difference differences between them. Just make sure that when you do your next layer, it's darker than the, your darkest one. Okay? Totally. Will do. Okay. Thanks, Keenan. You're welcome. Maybe we should actually have you paint these projects as I'm teaching them. I don't love that idea. <laughs> My iPad. How is that a thing? How many devices are here? I put it on airplane mode. But not your But not iPad. my iPad. That's how I'm still getting notifications. And I have my computer. Do I need to put my computer Unbelievable. on? Unbelievable. <sighs> okay. That's our first layer. Good job, you guys. Now we're going to move on to our second layer. And you can go into this fairly quickly. So. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to grab. I'm going to add a little bit more uh, space blue to my purple mixture because I want this to be like pink, purples, blue coloring. Like that is the color palette I decided it was going to be when I was painting this. You guys can decide something different. So I'm going to make more of a blue purple and I'm going to start putting in my next layer of building. So I'm going to go with this guy right here. Again, make sure that the value is slightly darker 
You don't want to go too dark with this guy though because we want to make sure that the buildings in front are darker. So if you lay a color and you need to like just use water to spread it out and lighten it, that's what I do. And if you want to put windows on this one, you can. I think I just did it in the center. So I left this space white and then I just did little marks across. Oh, nice. And you can decide. Some floors may not have their lights on. Yeah, they could be out. There's one. We'll do this one. I'm using my round two. Oh, that one I forgot to leave the windows. That's okay. Since I forgot to leave the windows on this one, then I'll probably put windows on this one. Hmm. And um, you wanna make sure that your pink is dry. My, this building is dry now, so I can paint around it and not be afraid of it blending or bleeding together. How do you feel about posture tips? Posture tips? Uh -huh. Like when you're painting? Yeah. I don't feel like I am qualified to give people posture tips since I have terrible posture. Is that, why do you say that just because of like the amount of times your head's in the camera? <laughs> <laughs> that was the most amazing passive aggressive burn I have experienced, Keenan. Congratulations. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, well sit up straight and if there is a camera over your left hand shoulder, make sure your head isn't in that way. Thank you for that reminder, Keenan. You're welcome. <laughs> You're definitely not getting paid this week. <laughs> Am I out of the camera? Yes, you are. Okay. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Oh. Looks like I forgot to trace. See this area here? Yes. There's the little building. Oh yeah, the little guy. I didn't put it in. That's all right. Just do this. I never would have seen that. Now it's in. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, now we're gonna add um, a similar value, but with blues. I'm going to introduce space blue more into this painting and this conversation. So I'm going to grab a little bit of blue, mix it with my orchid, but have more blue than the orchid. Because you can see here, these are a similar value, but blue. So, got my blue, similar values, let's go. You're my boy, blue. <laughs> what is that from? I can't remember, but it's a very well-known quote. I know. I'm sure I'll figure it out. Okay, so I'm putting windows in this one. And then think of the size of the building and the relative size of the windows, right? So these would be huge windows on this building. So if you wanna make them smaller, That feels a little bit more to scale of what would be on that building. But, you know, also some buildings do have really huge windows, so you might not be wrong, you know? It's 
rarely wrong if it's in your own world. If that is not the truth. Okay. That feels good. I'm going to do the one next to it. If you're afraid of them touching and blending together, just leave a thin white line when you're painting them. And have you looked at comments from our hide and seek video? Because there are more soggy people than I thought. I'm soggy cereal not people. Surprised. I it's, mean, I am. <laughs> it's a great. It's a great way to eat cereal. <laughs> have we made a poll? A poll yet? I don't think so. We probably should. We probably should. Okay. So those are our mid values. Actually, this one should be darker. Okay, so if I want this to feel closer than these, I need to make this darker because right now, it doesn't really seem like it is. And the nice thing about being able to add or make something darker is you can just add on top of it and it will work just fine. There we go. I like that blue. Me too. It's like a periwinkle or... Yeah, good old periwinkle. Maybe make this one a little bit darker. Okay. Now we'll do our... Um, uh, our mid to dark. I don't think we're ready to do like full dark. I think we still need one step in between. I'm going to say our mid dark. <laughs> Is that a thing? Just made it up. Gray? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not pure dark. Not pure like Payne's gray. Like this is so dark. I still okay. want something in between mm. for this guy. This is a great example. We need oh, this guy it. color, okay. not this okay. guy color. I was also still trying to figure out a word for it. Because it didn't seem like you were satisfied with gray. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I mixed a little bit of orchid, space blue, and Payne's gray. I got this really gorgeous desaturated blue. And I'm going to go with that. And on this one, the left side does not have windows, but the right side does. So I'll be painting this with my round six. And then when I switch over and do the other side, I'll use my two. So again, you're gonna do kind of a grid. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just giving the suggestion of windows. And after you've made your grid, then you can be like, here's a window. And this one is still sleeping. This one's awake still. You know. Have you ever seen the movie Sleepless in Seattle? Absolutely, I have. Good, 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 good. Does this remind you of that? Yes. Oh, yeah, because that's on the cover, isn't it? Or something. I the intro. I don't know. I just know that it makes me think of it. I don't know how my brain works. There's I, no reason behind it. I think there's images of like the Seattle uh, cityscape and then there's like lights on and it's like black. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would make sense. Hmm. Just decided to add another layer. Oh, my line got crooked. Okay. 
all right, you guys, this is gonna happen to you. When that happens, you basically just have to make your building wider to straighten it up. Wow. You just had like 75,000 square feet to that building. <laughs> Look at all this power I have. <laughs> I'm going to make the top wider too, so then it doesn't feel off center on the top. Okay, now you can't even tell. So years ago, uh, I used to be the manager for a carpet cleaning crew that would travel around. Okay, a the traveling... crew consisted of me and Brock. Okay, who's now, if you don't know, the director of Let's Make Art. Yes. So, now that we're on the same page, every city we would go to that had uh, buildings like this, we would make it a point to just ask if we could go to the very top. So we would go into these buildings and we're like, hey, uh, can we go to the top? And they'd be like, what? They'd be so confused. And then they would let us go to the top. Would they really? Yeah. That's awesome. I know, it was awesome. It was a good time. If we had been into photography back then, we would have had some really cool photos, but you we were not. Oscar came on. Hi, Oscar. Oscar, welcome. Oscar is our AC. And he just wants to be here with us. Yeah. I get it. I can't get mad at him, you know? He just wants a friend. I, th I really just think he's applauding us. <laughs> Like, whenever he really likes how I laid down that paint, he was just like, good job. <laughs> With no variation in his voice. It's just, good. Good. <laughs> okay, and I'm doing this one all the side. Now, my outline didn't go all the way to the side of my paper, so I'm just extending the buildings. And then this one does have windows on it too, so I'm going to do, but I just did windows kind of on the sides. So you guys can totally switch up where the windows would be on your buildings. Just play with it, you know? And I want these to be smaller. So I'm going to use my round two. I've never lived in a city larger than Cameron. That blows my mind. For anyone listening, Cameron is at max 9,000 population. Yeah. So, fun fact about Keenan. Do you want to? I always thought it'd be cool to live down in Kansas City. Kansas City is wonderful. But I, I also love the small town feel of Cameron. Yeah. There are benefits to both. Yeah. Okay. I think I just need to do kind of a medium dark here and then we can go straight into our dark darks, okay? And if you wanna like bring purple back into the conversation, grab a little bit more purple. Just make sure it's a darker value than the original purple we had.
And just so you guys know, when you do the windows, they don't all have to be perfectly the same equal next to each other um, because there are a few things to take into account. One, are there lights on in their apartment building? Where is the light source coming from? What is the angle of this building and how is the light hitting it? Um, because all of those things affect how much you will see the windows and the lines in there. Okay, so don't, don't stress if it's not like perfect, perfectly lined up. Okay, now I think we're ready to do our last dark layer. So I'm gonna do mostly Payne's Gray and um, Space Blue for this because I want it to be our darkest value. And I'll start on the left hand side actually so I can work my way across without smearing. And that feels dry enough, so I'm just going to start. So I like to put in my grids for my windows and then I'll decide how long, how big do I want these? I don't want them that big. That's like so big, right? Like studio apartment windows oh, for everyone. What a dream though. Oh. Maybe I'll leave those in just so we can like dream of what that, those wind, what that would be like. Now hear me out. Okay. I just had another thought about looking at it. Yeah. It also looks like a parking garage. Oh. There are definitely parking garages in the city. Totally. Let's leave that. I'm gonna leave that in there. Nice. I think if I were to ever live in a big city, I would want, I don't think I'd be able to afford it, but I would want to be able to have a some type of studio apartment really open, you know? Yeah, like open floor plan. With a giant window. Yeah. And then slap a baby grand there. Yes, mm. that would be the best. Another thing I like to do when I fit, visit large cities is go to the local music stores. Yeah? And I try to play any and all pianos that uh, catch my eye. Do you have a favorite music store in Kansas City? I do not. Oh, have, have you been to some there? I was hoping you wouldn't ask that. <laughs> I've never been to a music store in Kansas City. No way. Yeah. I have been to music stores in really? Kansas City. Well, because Michael. Oh, yeah. You should go with Michael. I totally should. Michael plays uh, guitar. Keenan plays piano. Mm -hmm. So I am not. What's that song you can play, though? Oh, my gosh. Okay, I did take piano lessons when I was younger, and we had a res res piano recital when I was probably in, like, third grade. And my song was called Waterfall. Yes. And I can play that song still. So whenever you, whenever you see me by the piano, I'll, I'll be playing that song. Over and over. Over and over. <laughs> Keenan just looks at me and he's like, that's a really nice song as I play it for like the fourth <laughs> time in a row. <laughs> also, Keenan has a keyboard next to his desk, so. I do. <laughs> But if there's anything I can do repeatedly, it's listen to the same song over <laughs> and over and over. Do you know what's funny is actually around that time I learned, do you remember the song, um, it was by Vanessa Carlson, like yes. A Thousand Miles? A thousand percent, I know that song. Okay, well I knew it on piano, and I loved that I knew that on piano, so yes. I would play it over and over and over oh and over gosh. and over, and I was visiting my family, I was staying with my grandparents, and you guys, I'm just adding windows on this building. So same thing, dark value, do your grid, then decide what windows you want to keep. And uh, after like being there for like a week, my mom like sits me down and she's just like, we love hearing you play. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, but do you think like maybe sometimes when you play the same song over again, we kind of lose that love. <laughs> So she was like trying ever so politely to like t 
tell me to play anything else. It's so funny. I mean, she did that in the best way. She did. But I was still devastated, of course. I'm like, what? You don't love hearing my music? Oh, that is excellent. So great. You added that line in the middle and it changed the whole look of that building. The window, mm -hmm. the extra line, I just felt like once it was just a little bit too thick and I wanted some in the center. So when I'm like deciding what windows to like keep and chew, like keep and lose, I just think of like, I do it more from a composition standpoint of like, where is there a lot of white area? I don't want too much white area in one spot because that will throw off the composition. So I kind of just look at I don't know, where it's like standing out too much and I take it out. Does your unfocusing the eyes move help with that? During this part, my eyes are completely unfocused, actually. And a lot of the time when I'm painting, I'm painting with unfocused eyes. I need you to tell your eyes to focus up. <laughs> Now is the time to focus up or unfocus your eyes. But it, it's true, like, if I'm only paying attention to lights and darks, I unfocus my eyes while I'm painting, so then I can easily decide what to keep and what to leave. Interesting. Again, I don't know if that's standard. That's just what I have done for me that's helpful. But if that is not helpful for you, please don't feel like that that is like the goal or the expectation. Everybody works differently. And so if you find that it doesn't actually help you out, don't do it. If it does help you out, you can do it. That's not dark enough, that's okay. I'll just do another layer on top. Also, um, watercolor dries lighter than when it is wet. So if at the end of this you're like, oh, that part needs to another layer on it, that's okay. That's normal for watercolor, so don't stress out or think that you're doing anything wrong. Or you're like, I swear that looked right a minute ago, just because it dried. A good example of that is at the beginning of this, the pink wash you put across the whole paper versus mm -hmm. then versus now. Mm -hmm. Which I was just thinking, I enjoy this light of a wash versus the dark of the reference card. Mm, yeah, I like that it's more subtle. This may not be easily seen on the cameras. Yeah, the really light wash. Mm -hmm. You guys probably can't see that very well, but it is there. And that is the challenge with watercolor, is really being okay with the lights, how light you can actually go. And then also how dark you can go. Have you ever been to St. Louis? I drove through it one time, but we did not, like, stop. The arch is pretty cool. Really? Yeah. You can feel it sway when you're up at the top. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. No, it's solid. It's been there for years. <laughs> So 
So these colors are slightly different than my reference photo. I think the my lighter wash buildings went a little too peachy. Now what you can do, like let's say you painted this and you're like, okay, these colors don't necessarily mix together. Um, you can do another layer on top of the like peachy pink washes that are more like purple and blue to like have them match the foreground buildings. Or you can then, and I know this sounds really silly, but it's like, it's helpful for me is I just create a different story within this painting where I'm like, okay, instead of a city morning, what if it's more like the sun is coming up and some of the buildings are getting that morning sun mm -hmm. and some of them have not reached that morning sun yet. And that's why they feel cooler and then are darker in the shadows. You know I what like I mean? That. Like, that's cool. it, I don't know. I feel like if you just adjust the narrative to your painting, it like gives you the freedom to be absolutely. like, I absolutely painted this on purpose. And that was my plan the entire time, you know? <laughs> I'm so good at this. <laughs> Um, but if you were to do a wash over them to make them more purple and blue, a little like more desaturated to match the other buildings, all you would have to check then is making sure that your values are still in line. So if you need to go then and darken like your medium values because your lighter values got darker, that would be the only other adjustment you would have to make. Doing my grids here for my windows. And basically, I would have less windows than more. The more windows you have, it just introduces more, how do I say this, ways to see different angles. And so then it makes it more obvious if things are off. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's why I did a little bit less windows um, than I could have because it just kind of complicates the painting just a little bit of like, now I really have to make sure that these things are angled correctly or else it's going to be obvious that it's off. Oh, I didn't do windows in there. That's okay. That's the back of a building. That is now. It's been bricked up. <laughs> that is now covered. Okay. Um, we're done. I'm going to just see, though, about doing a wash over this pink. Oh. Just to see what it looks like. Okay. So I'm going to grab, um, I'm not going to grab blue. I'm going to grab orchid. I'm excited about this. I'm just going to see what it's going to do. I don't know. It might turn muddy. But, like, I'll try it on mine, so then that way you guys can decide if you want to do it on yours. Sarah, question. Yeah. I know you always say you should have two glasses of water, but you rarely paint with two glasses of water. Is that because you've given up trying to keep the colors in I the right glasses? I have given up or? trying to show you guys the correct way because I just <laughs> can't do it. I can't do it. If there are empty water cups on me, I will absolutely clean my brush in them. I, it doesn't matter. One of these times I'm going to set up the table and I'm just going to have 14 glasses of water and we'll see how many you use. Honestly, if you go and look at my desk upstairs of where I paint, it's just littered with <laughs> different varying water cups of dirtiness because I can't keep one meant for just clean water. I can't do it. I've tried you guys. I've tried to show you the way. It's just not in me. Okay, so I'm doing a purple wash on this. And it's feeling good. I feel like that feels better. Um, and then when that dries, I'll then decide if I need to darken these buildings. So far, I think I kept the values light enough that there's still a difference. These guys are really what I wanna go after, so. Come on, little fella, let's see what you do. Okay, see how dark that is now? Mm -hmm. That's dark. 
What you can do though is also do a really light, add in really light buildings if you lose your lights. So let's say I did that and that's dark and I'm like, oh darn, but guess what? I can just come behind here. Oh, snap. And introduce a lighter building. Dang. So don't get stressed out. If it gets, if your lightest value gets too dark that you can't save it, introduce a lighter value that's just behind it. And then now you'll have your far away buildings again, you know? I like that. Let's do a wash on this one. Do you know how they do, uh, they have at Subway, they, you ring a bell if it's a perfect sandwich? I did not know that. That's their, amazing. Their bell is broken currently. <laughs> That's but I was just thinking, we could ring a bell when we're done with the painting. Ding! Yeah! I like, I mean, that's a great idea. It would also take away from our oath ding, which is really fun. I mean, can you have too many dings? Did I don't you ever, know, it depends. My mom hates that sound. Did you ever watch the tutorial? I think one time, it was a long time ago when I filmed with Al, he had a foghorn. <laughs> and so whenever we did something, he would like press it, and we'd be like, whoa! <laughs> I don't remember what tutorial that was. That is awesome. Okay. Actually, I really like how vibrant that purple is. I want to bring that over here. I hope this guy, sh this shows you my process a little bit of like, you can absolutely change paintings as they go, okay? You can be like, oh, that purple was really nice. Let's bring that on this side so it doesn't feel um, like random. I want it to feel like, yeah, that purple is supposed to be here, so let's bring it. So you guys have every right to do this with your own painting as I'm doing with mine. And I know that when you're new, it's scary to know how to make those decisions. It's scary because you're like, well, I'm new to this. How am I supposed to know um, what part I touch or leave? Or... The only way really to know is to just do it. And the more that you do it, the better you'll get at it. The better, better you'll see of what you need to adjust. It just gets better over time. Okay, we're done. Let's take the tape off, which is one of my favorite parts. Um, someone let me know if they see the, uh, if they've tried the heat gun trick. Oh yeah, I forgot about that trick. Yeah. I used a heat gun to melt PVC pipe. Oh. But I actually turned them into recurve bows. Like bow and arrow uh -huh. bows? I shot my nieces and nephews with foam arrows. <laughs> it was really fun. That's funny. Heat gun trick. And now you can see when we're taking off the paper, maybe that edge sticks out a bit it more does. so they can see that background color now a little bit. Ooh. All right, there's that our looks so great. There's our city morning. So if you painted this, thank you so much for painting with me. I can't wait to see what yours um, turns out like. Remember, this is your world. You can make, you can add buildings, you can take some away, windows, no windows, change up the colors. It is yours and you get to decide everything about it and no one can tell you you're wrong. That's the great thing about being an artist, I think. So. I just realized that I said I just want to be right all the time, and that's why I paint. So <laughs> what I meant. But anyways, that should be on a t-shirt. <laughs> if you're on Instagram, you can tag us in it at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. We have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Watercolor where you can um, just share with each other what you're creating, what you've learned, seeing how other people are painting. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at Let's Make Art.com. Thank you so much for painting with me. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Wait, did you, did you press stop? No. Somebody came to our store yesterday. Her oh. name was Lauren. Yes. And she was wonderful. We, I was literally walking to the office. She just happens to be walking by. She knew we were closed, but she, we ran into each other. Um, and she was so wonderful and sweet and so kind. So Lauren, thank you so much for stopping by. And she says that her son, Bennett, Bennett. Um, likes to listen to these before bed. So, for Bennett, good night. 
I hope you sleep well. Lauren, thanks for stopping by. It was great meeting you. And you guys have a great day.